When you go down, uh, you're, you're basically going into a black tunnel. And um, at the beginning, there's not a lot of sound around you other than if you're in a tractor or uh, some sort of vehicle. And as we go deeper down into the, into the crust we get through, as the mines get deeper and deeper, uh, the temperatures get warmer and warmer. So if you're in a very deep mine, it could be as hot as 40 degrees just from the ambient temperature of the rocks. We're, we're working between 200 and 600 meters below surface, different places. Uh, we have a shrine uh, closely to the start of the mine. A lot of the workers will bring things to add to the to the cross and the candles and all that that are that are sitting in the uh, on the actual shrine, and uh, it's just sort of tokens. And so they take a lot of pride in in how that looks. As a geologist, we're used to looking at rocks and seeing them sort of from the top. The interesting thing about being in a mine is we're actually looking from the inside out. So it gives us a different perspective as geologists. And it often gets wetter. Uh, one of the vine mines is actually below the water table. So we're, we're pumping it down, but it's still, when you get to the bottom of that mine, it's like being in a very dark uh, rainforest where it's raining a lot. So you have huge drops of water coming out of the, out of the rock. Silver mining is, is unique. Uh, a lot of attention is given to gold. And um, gold is not simple, but silver is more complex. Basically, the process of mining and uh, refining is getting that concentration of silver within the rock, and the rock is made of minerals, so it's getting that rock out of its, out of it, out of the earth. The miners uh, start the process by essentially drilling blast holes into the rock parallel within the vein and parallel to the vein in, in what we call the host rock or the rock that's adjacent to the, the vein itself. They, they drill those blast holes and then basically they, they set explosive charges into those blast holes and that would shatter the rock and uh, bring it down in you know pieces. It's then picked up by the scoops which are basically under, underground front-end loaders. So they're, they're short, so they can go into the tunnels easily, but they have a big bucket on the front, picks it up, uh, turns around and loads it in a truck, and the truck takes it to surface. The processing plant would have a series of stages in it. The first stage would be to crush and break up the rock. And the intention here is to, to physically separate the silver particles from the non-silver particles. So you break it up fine and then you're left with little bits and pieces that are high in silver and a lot of stuff that's got no silver in it at all. When the plant is ready for it, it's picked up, it's crushed down to a finer uh, uh, material and that material is set into the ball mills. And after uh, the ball mills, we'll take it from that 3 8 down to a fine powder like talcum powder or, or flour. So separation is done in a few ways. Flotation, which is a process in which uh, the particles are mixed in water with air bubbles. And we add a certain chemical at very low concentrations that attaches to the silver particles and it makes them hydrophobic, meaning they don't like water. We're adding chemicals that will help material that is normally heavy, i.e. pyrite, gold, silver, to actually float. That's done by creating an oily surface on those silver particles. Now this is mixed with a lot of tiny little air bubbles and of course the air bubbles want to cling to the oily surface. And as they cling to the surface, they raft the particles up to the top of a tank and they overflow the tank. Kind of like the top of a beer onto the, onto the countertop. And we, we um, suck the water out as much as possible and we dry that and that comes out as a concentrate. Now the main process probably used is a leaching process which means that we actually dissolve the silver. So, and that's usually done with cyanide as a leaching agent. And so you're, you're mixing this fine powder with cyanide and so it's like a, it's like a slurry. When you're, when, you're, when you're separating it, it's, it's, it's twirling around so you've got to make sure that the cyanide gets around all the small grains. It selectively leaches the silver it also leaches gold, I should say, 
and it doesn't leach anything else. And at the end of that process, it's kind of like taking salt and putting it in sand, adding water, mixing it up, and then draining off the water, which has got all the salt in it now, and you're leaving the sand behind. The material continues on down through the leach tanks, and it takes about uh, 72 hours to go through that leach process. Once you've leached the silver and you've separated the solids from the water, you then use a process to cement out the silver in a concentrated form. And usually we do that with zinc dust. So it goes into some filters, which basically press all the um, cyanide solution out. And you, you have this gray precipitate material that is then sent over to be dried and then put into the oven. And from there we, we pour the uh, dory bars.